Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a brand new series, this time with a game called War Sim. Uh, essentially the best way to describe War Sim would be like a roguelike kingdom management game, maybe similar to uh, Dwarf Fortress. Only a little bit more text based, well actually a lot more text based and a lot less uh, I would say what, graphical based I guess where you move around. You'll see when we get into the game, but it is like a one-man person team working on this game. You can see the creator's name up at the top above the War Sim logo. Uh, before I get into this though, if you guys want to check the game out for yourself and give it a spin, I'll have a link down below in the description leading to the game's subreddit on reddit.com. That is a place where you can communicate with other fans of the game as well as the creator of the game. And if you want to, there's a link there where you can download the game and give it a spin for yourself. Did I say it's free? Yeah, it's free, so definitely check it out, but we're going to go ahead and start a new game, give it a spin for ourselves, and there's difficult, uh, different difficulty settings here, easy, normal, hard, solid, and insane. Um, I'm not sure if the difficulty settings actually change how the, the AI and the other kingdoms play. I don't think it does. I think it only changes what you start with. We're going to go with insane difficulty because... I'm an insane person, and I really think that games like this shine uh, in their darkest moments when it comes to uh, difficulty ratings. I think the higher the difficulty, the the more challenge you get, the more fun you have. At least for me, that's how it works. So I want to do the insane difficulty so that I can really test my skills. I'm no professional at the game, but I have played it a little bit now, so I have a good idea of what's going on. So, on insane mode, you are the ruler of Asalona. Uh, a town that was once the eye of a great kingdom, and now with barely a scrap of claim to the once great kingdom, you rest uneasy while the rebellion on your doorstep makes its final steps to defeating you, and the hordes of countless bandit kings circle your lands waiting to strike. The world is vast and complex, there is much to see and do and little time to waste. From the failed ancient lands to the blood-soaked arena, these lands call to be united under the flag of Azalona. Alright, press any key to continue. So we're going to go ahead now. Everything in this game is randomly generated for the most part. Some things are the same every time you play, but there is a lot of random uh, procedural and random generation going on in the game. Like, for instance, our starting races here. So uh, these are the, uh, I guess you would say the factions or the different um, races that are going to be populating our world for this playthrough. We have men, which happen uh, every time, but then we've got the death men, the tattooed gnomes, the tree hydromancers, the northwestern druids, the arch dwarves, goblins, and demons of the southern gate. Goblins and demons are also, uh, just like men, they're always going to appear in every, at least they have for me in every single playthrough that I've, or every game I've played. So here we are. This is uh, technically the game. This is uh, your screen. So there's really no map or anything. You just—it's kind of all text-based. But it's really interesting and it's really really cool. And it goes pretty uh, in depth uh, with a lot of the stuff you could do. So the very first thing we're gonna want to do, being in insane mode, uh, there's really like only certain things you can do. You have to like go through and do like specific things if you don't do them you're not going to make it very long we might we probably won't even make it very long to begin with i usually only survive for maybe uh maybe an hour at best but we're going to give it a, our best shot so we do want to go through and change some of the laws of our kingdom uh and one of those big things big things is going to be the taxes we don't get we don't start with very much gold so we don't have the resources to purchase the troops that we need we're going to have to get gold very, very quickly. So we're going to go ahead and put a gambling tax on, uh, a banking tax, and a land tax. Now we do use, lose a little bit of public opinion doing things like that. You can see up at the top there are gold, men, lands, and public opinion. It did start at 35. It has dropped to 32. I haven't really fully figured out what the public opinion does other than basically let you pass really um, strict laws and people don't like it. But other than that, I haven't really seen, it might like affect how many people, um, defect against your kingdom. I'm not entirely sure, but, um, these are laws that we have to pass regardless of what it makes our public opinion, because we won't survive if we don't gold 50 is super poor, only 23 men to our name. And we only have one land. And to give you an, ex uh, an example of how bad that is. If you play easy difficulty, you start with 10 lands. Yeah, we're in a pretty bad spot. <laughs> so, 
Um, we're not done changing laws yet. Let's go back to the laws real quick. We also want to change the recruitment and training laws. Right now, we have free enlistment, which is active. We're going to declare forceful enlistment. Now, that might make me seem like an evil ruler, but if you really think about it, these are dark times for Azalona. And we're almost like initiating a draft to try to uh, bounce back. We also want to go into other here. I find that forgiving the outlaws and allowing them to enter back into society, though sounding like a bad thing, generally seems to be a good thing because bandits will come back and join my kingdom and fight in my army for me. And yeah, occasionally they like re-defect re basically and like go join the bandits again. It happens every now and again. But I find that the rate of them leaving after they've already joined me is a lot lower than the rate of them coming to me. So I, it's just free soldiers in the long run. And I don't think they're as good as actual soldiers and knights, but it's better than nothing when when you need when you're you're scraping for scraps like we are right now you got to do everything you can now there's a ton of stuff here and i'm not going to go all uh over all of it at the same exact time because it would just be super overwhelming so as i go through the game and do different things i'll explain what i'm doing and the mechanics behind it um, so we don't need to do any exploring because we can't explore on our first turn here basically so I'm not going to touch into that just yet. Um, is there anything else that I want to do? There's other things that I definitely want to check out, but I'm not going to do it just on this turn because it just doesn't make any sense. However, we are going to recruit some troops. We have only 50 gold. 50 gold is enough to buy us one soldier. We're going to buy it. One soldier doesn't make a difference. I don't know, but we've got the gold and sitting on the gold definitely doesn't help. So because it's probably just going to get robbed out from underneath us uh, at the end of our turn. So we might as well spend it at least on a... A uh, single soldier to help us. So let's go ahead and end our turn. Now here comes a screen. Right when we go to end our turn, we can go ahead and launch attacks at different people. But let's take a look and see uh, sort of what bandits, what races, what minor factions the game has spawned in. So you can see there that we have rebels that we can attack. We're at war with them currently. Um, we've got some bandit hordes. We're not at war with uh, any of the bandits, but they'll still raid us and whatnot and attack us regardless of whether we're at war. And then we have some independent kingdoms down at the bottom. We seem to be at war with two of them. Uh, we've got the Mead Meadow City State, the Allied Empire of Jinky, Grizzly Free City of Warm, the Spoken Eastern Hold of Bryn Mawr, and the Fierce County. We're at war with the, Med, uh, the Mead Meadow City State and the Fierce County. The other independents, we may try to uh, ally them in the future. I think we'll probably do that next turn or a turn after that, maybe. We're not going to launch any attacks though, and if we don't, then we get our end of the turn report. So there's a lot of things happening here, and it does not really that, I found that it's really not that beneficial to read over all of it out loud. It's just a lot more beneficial to point out the key things that are important. So I'll go through and point some of the key things out. Uh, you know, we enlisted some peasants, we've earned gold from our different taxes that we've, uh, that we've put out there. See, as you can see then, uh, three outlaws under uh, below the taxes under your law three outlaws have enlisted into your army so that's pretty cool now they might leave again but for now we've got them and that's the most important part and we actually got a decent amount of gold how much gold were we pillaged for though because we get pillaged by bandits uh pretty often um they pillaged 62 gold and the minor bandit uh, bandit group pillaged 104 so we actually are going to leave up for gold are we going to get attacked we did not get attacked and we have a little bit of gold but now we can do some exploring. So why don't we take a look at the world around us and see what we've got. So going to the Explore the Realm screen, you can see here that we have the options to go north, east, south, or west. And how many places in those directions there are uh, worth exploring. I think we're going to go ahead and I kind of, sometimes there's certain places that always spawn in the same direction. So I will admit I have a general idea of where some of the early game stuff is. Um, for that reason... I'm going to go ahead and go to the um, the western lands. I know there's something up north that we're going to want to get eventually, but we're not going to get it just yet because uh, it doesn't do us any good. So we're going to walk uh, west. We have one chance to explore. We're going to use that one chance to explore to the west. And we found the Monfort Mine. So let's see what we've got here. You come upon Monfort Mine, which is currently held by a group of goblins. They claim to be the Harlaw Mining Company and kindly request that you leave. So we could attack them with 350 men. We could offer to buy the mine for 3,500 gold, or we can leave. We don't have the gold and we don't have the men. So we're going to go ahead and heed their advice. We're going to leave. But we can always come back to it in the future. 
uh, if we even survive that long. Hopefully we do. What else? We've got a little bit of gold, right? But do we want to spend it on men? We have 37 men right now, which isn't uh, which isn't bad, but isn't good. We're not going to be attacking anybody for a little bit because uh, we want to wait till we get at least over 100 men. So it's going to be kind of a waiting game, and we're going to kind of be trying to sit back in the shadows and hope that we don't get attacked. So what should we do? We should probably go ahead and arrange some diplomacy whilst we still have the gold to even pay for our diplomat, which, by the way, who is our diplomat? The old Kroll. All right, uh, skill 50 and the wages are 50, so that's actually not that bad. So we will keep our diplomat hanging around. So let's go ahead and arrange some diplomacy then. What do we want to do? Well, we probably want to talk to the independent territories. We could also um, learn about some other, the goblins, the bandits, the rebels, but we're, we're going to talk to the independent territories. Now, we're at war with two of them. Uh, I wonder if we could actually end those wars by talking to them. Uh, offer peace. Requires a soldier as emissary. I'd like to end these wars, so why don't we try to see if we can do that. Your emissary carries a message of peace to Med, uh, Meadow City State. Leader Steer the Luckless offers you a truce but names a high price to spite you. Wow. Nope. Sorry. No peace there then, unfortunately. Uh, can we get peace with the Fierce County at least? <sighs> wow. He, uh, a truce if I pay uh, for my crimes, which I haven't committed any, but I guess. Against his people, you are told this through Messenger Raven. As your emissary does not return... Great, so one of our soldiers didn't even return. So, so much for going for peace. We'll just have to crush both of those below our boots uh, when we get the chance to. But I guess we'll go ahead and see if we can get some allies at least to help us. Uh, who though? The Allied Empire, the Grizzly Free City of Worm, the Spoken Eastern Hold of Bryn Mawr. Let's go for the Spoken Eastern Hold of Bryn Mawr. See if we can get some diplomacy with them. I wonder if a trade agreement would help us too. Let's go for the alliance first. Okay, so they agreed to an alliance. Very cool. So now we got all sorts of stuff we can do. Uh, we could request financial aid, send military aid. We could request military aid, gift some land, sell the right to levy troops, buy land. 1,000 gold, 100 soldiers. What happens if I request military aid? They send a small unit of men to assist me. Very cool. And then a trade agreement? Doesn't fully understand what a trade deal means, but an advisor tells him that it makes money and money is good, so he is happy. Okay, cool. So we did some stuff with them. So we've got our first ally, the Spoken Eastern Hold of Bryn Mawr, and they actually sent us some troops, which is pretty awesome. So we've got a little bit more extra men. Now, another thing we should do, and I meant to do this the first turn, is we should go into the Royal Bank here and the and take out a loan. Now, that might seem like a bad idea, but when you're playing on insane mode, all of these things that seem like really bad ideas turn into really good ideas because I might not even live long enough to have to pay this loan off anyways, so I'm better off taking it than not taking it. That loan's going to allow us to recruit some more soldiers, and boy, do we need soldiers. He can only offer us up to 29 of his men at 50 gold per head. We're going to go ahead and buy 20 of them. That pretty much gets rid of all our gold, but you can see now we're up at men 66. So that's not too bad. We already did our exploring for this round, correct? Yes, we did. So, the only other thing to do would be to end our turn. And we want to launch no attacks. Please do not get attacked. We did not get attacked. Fantastic. The Grizzly Northern Vultures Mercenary Group has disbanded. Okay. We got some trade caravans from the Spoken Eastern Hold of Bryn Mawr. Uh, they earned us 165 gold. We enlisted 13 peasants. We got some gold from our taxes. Um, some outlaws enlisted in our army. And we were raided a little bit of gold, but actually not that much. So we made a decent amount of gold this time around. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of exploring again. Usually exploring is the first thing you want to do, and let me explain why. I'll, I'm going to want to spend my gold this turn, but I'm not going to have more gold by the end of my turn than I am by the beginning because I'm going to spend it on things like troops. If you go exploring, sometimes you bump into random events 
that allow you to do things like purchase units for a cheaper price than you might recruit them from the uh, from the recruit and sell troops tab. So you want to make sure that when you go to explore, you have as much gold as you're going to have. Because if you do bump into cheaper troops, you're going to want to be able to have the gold to purchase them. So let's go ahead and explore to the east here. A sinking sand hole. So I kind of know what this does, but I'll go click on it so we can see. So you approach the sinking sand hole, a large pit of sand that swallows up all that tries to walk over it. It is unknown where it goes. Some say it is the portal to another dimension. That's a possibility. We don't know. We could send a soldier to cross it and see, or we could try to cross it uh, ourselves. I already am kind of familiar with what happens here, so I'm going to kind of tell you guys without um, doing it. I don't know what happens if I try to cross it myself. I only assume that I probably die, so I'm not going to try that. But I can send a soldier to cross it. If I send a soldier to cross it, he sinks into it and disappears. So I'm not going to do that because I don't want to waste a soldier just to show you guys what that does. I told you what it does, and every single time I've done it, like every game I've played, it happens like that every time. It would be interesting to cross it myself and see what happens. I don't know, um, but I don't want to ruin the playthrough because if I do that, uh, if I do that and it, and it does end the playthrough, it's going to be a really big bummer. So if one of you guys want to cross it, and <laughs> let me know what happens. I'll be more than happy to uh, be spoiled for that one. All right, so we could go ahead and purchase more men, but you know what? I'm actually going to go ahead and we're going to we're going to arrange some more diplomacy. We're going to talk to some more independent territories. Who else do we got that we might be able to ally? The Free City of Worm or the Empire of Jinky? Let's go for the Free City of Worm. Trade and Diplomacy. Their wealth is pretty high up there as well as how many troops they have. They've got six lands. Let's ask for an alliance. They are pleased to join us in alliance. Fantastic. So we've got um, another alliance going. We're going to try to request military aid from them as well. They spent, sent us a small unit of men. We're going to set up a trade ag agreement. And so we got a trade agreement with them. Hmm. Good. Good, good, good. We could request financial aid too. Is that... Ah, they sent us some gold. Let's go talk to our other allies and get some free gold and whatnot from them too. I don't see any reason why we can't keep doing this. As far as I could tell, we don't seem to suffer from it. Can I get some financial aid, guys? Yeah. How about some more military aid? Oh, it costs faction relation. Okay, so we're not going to do anything else for now. We don't we don't want to spend all that sweet sweet faction relation and and lose our allies because we're all, they're already helping us a lot. So we're not going to want to do that, but we've got 401 gold and 102 men. Let's go ahead and take a pop in the arena. So the arena is really cool and it's actually super addicting. So you got to be careful, uh, especially if you're a gambler. I highly uh, warn you from betting on these fights because it will uh, bring out the inner gambler in you. <laughs> so let's go ahead and take a look at the grand champion. So Glim uh, Gimli of Bloodied Darkness is the current grand champion of Aslona. He has currently won a single fight, earning him the title of grand champion and hopes to prove himself and defend his title in his first title defense. So we could bet on him, we could watch him, challenge him, we could uh, check out his statistics. If we take a look at his statistics, we can see he's only won one fight, so it's hard to say if he's going to really win or not. What else about him? His strength is 156. That's pretty good. Why don't we go ahead and bet on a grand champion fight just for fun though and see what we've got. So Gimli of the Bloody Darkness, he's fighting Augustus the Elf-like. We're going to bet on our grand champion and hope that he wins. Um, we'll go ahead and only bet 50 gold just to try it out. So the horns of the arena are sounded and the two fighters dash out towards each other ready to spill some blood. The crowd are uh, ecstatic and the cheers and roars of the crowd echo for miles around. Let's see. Um, all right, so Augustus the Elf-like is defeated, and we won 100 gold on our bet. And then uh, you can see the people rejoice as the Grand Champion keeps his title. So Augustus the Blo or, uh, Gimli the Bloody Darkness uh, manages to hold his title. And now he has two victories under his belt. And we got a little bit of gold from it. So what do we do next? Well, I think it's safe to say that we should recruit some troops. Um... Let's just go ahead and buy five. 
There we go. And so that is where we stand. Um, we're at the year 104 up there at the top, so that gives you guys kind of an idea of passage of time for the kingdom of Eslona. But we are out of time for this episode. Pretty awesome game, I gotta say. I'm pretty excited to continue forward and see how well we do, but uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to uh, ask down below. I'll do my best to answer them as well as definitely go down into the description down below. Click on the link. Check out the game. It's free. You've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. Worst case scenario, you have fun for two, three hours. <laughs> so you can't go wrong there. But I want to thank you guys for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.